a shadow looms over Yagami and Kuwana. Japan's National Intelligence Agency Public Security fixes its gaze on Reiko Kuzumoto of the Ministry of Health. Five years ago, Kuwana prompted her to take revenge on Shinya Kawai for pushing her son to the brink. Secrets can only lie dormant so long, and upon their waking, chaos ensues. Done it again, Tsukumo. Can't believe you found it. <laughs> I figured Mitsuru Kusumoto would be in one of the better hospitals around the health ministry. That narrowed it down to just a few locations. Then I pinpointed the exact one through sheer determination. And that led you to Toto University Hospital. So Mitsuru is still lying in a coma there? Yep. Reiko Kusumoto has been visiting her son every night for the past 13 years even after she became Vice Minister. If you gentlemen want to meet her in person, that would be your best chance. But Yagami, you seriously think you can convince Reiko Kusumoto to turn herself in? Well, I'm gonna try at least. She's at the top of the food chain. If it comes out that she committed murder, the whole country's gonna lose it. If they hadn't tried to hide it, nobody else would have needed to pay for it. Sawa sensei yeah, you're right. And if she confesses to killing Kawhi, public security will run out of reasons to keep defending RK. So in theory, that should free up the police to pursue Soma about Sawa-sensei. Totally agree with you there. But Kawana-san's against that, right? Didn't he say he wouldn't let her turn herself in? Yeah, that's why he's not in the loop on this. So, you're just gonna show up? You do know she's probably surrounded by public security at all times, don't you? Just means we gotta be prepared for that. Like the professional detectives we are. Prepared? How? <sighs> Just leave it to us. Yagami-san, I gotta go get ready. Let's meet at Toto University Hospital. Got it. See ya. <laughs> so what do you need from me in this, Yagami? You got any old acquaintances in RK? Think you can find out where Soma and Akutsu are? You forget who you're talking to? Why wouldn't I be able to cover that? I knew a few ex-Tojo guys who go in and out of RK on the regular. Thanks. But watch your back. If they find out you're spying on them, they won't like it. I'll be ready. Like the professional ex-Yakuza I am. See ya. <laughs> he's rough around the edges, but in the end he comes through. Yeah. Turns out he's got extra time on his hands. Why don't you hire him at your office, Yagamishi? <laughs> I'll talk about that with Kaito-san once he recovers. Anyway, sorry Tsukumo, but we have to take Sukiura from you again. <laughs> Why start apologizing now? It's all good. We'll talk again soon.
are you? Don't worry. I'll give it back to you after this. I'm sure it's bugged, and we wouldn't want anyone listening in now, would we? We'll take a few laps around the block, and then drop you back off at the hospital. Sorry, but we just need a bit of your time. Very well. Who are you people? We're just local detectives, but Kitakata Sensei is an acquaintance of ours. We know about Mitsurukun, and we know that five years ago, a man named Shinya Kawai mysteriously disappeared and died. I have no idea what you're saying. But you do. I know how this must come across right now, so I assure you, we aren't the ones posing a threat. Fine. What is it you want, then? All I want is the truth. In your own words. About Shinya Kawai, and how you carried out his murder. You're mistaken. I didn't do it. The other day you received a call from Kitakata-sensei, didn't you? He goes by the name Kawana now, and works as a handyman in Ijincho. He made that call because we needed to confirm something. Confirm what? Whether or not you were being watched by public security. <sighs> public security, you say? As it turns out, you are. Your cell phone is bugged. It can even use GPS to trace who's on the other end of the line. That kind of trace is only possible with cooperation from the cellular providers. Unless your public security could pull something like that off in secret. They want to hit you where you're vulnerable. And that's what you are now, after Kawana. Do you understand, Kusumoto-san? <sighs> you must really be something special. You were never in this job for yourself. It fell into your lap as your predecessors fell like dominoes. That's why you don't owe anyone anything. You're free of constraints. And Mitsuru-kun's tragedy even gained you public sympathy on top of it. Combine all that with a capable bureaucrat like you, there's no telling what you could accomplish. You're cleaning up house, tackling the revolving door problems. Things you know are the right moves, but with no regard for the consequences. I understand even the cabinet gauges your opinion, since you have so much public support. But I think that's also made you some enemies. Most likely whoever's holding public security's leash. I have more than a few enemies. I'm well aware of that. And I have no doubt public security would comply with them. To be quite frank, public security only exists to maintain the status quo. The establishment is made up of various powers which control politics and finance. But naturally, each branch has its own agendas, goals, ideas of justice, which leads to all sorts of issues and hindrances, which you call constraints. The more individuals who make up society, the more unavoidable that is. Are you implying it's public security's job to loosen those constraints? <laughs> There's more to it than that. The world we live in requires all kinds of value systems to coexist, even in chaos. But if you loosen the constraints too far, the fall of the state is inevitable. In that regard, public security's role is to stabilize and maintain the state even while bound by constraints. In other words, the constraints of these powers are precisely what are protected by public security. So the fact that I am not caught up in all that does, indeed, make me something of a pesky foreign object. A pesky foreign object. I see. So to these establishment people, you're something to be excised. Hmm? I guess there's bullying among adults in high places too. Yeah. Now we know why they were looking for any kind of weakness in you. And that's when they turned the spotlight on Shinya Kawai's disappearance. An event that was triggered by Akihiro Ihara's case. You know the one, I presume. Yes. An active duty policeman exacted revenge on the bully who drove his son to suicide. Your enemies must have heard that and thought to themselves, what would Reiko Kusamoto have done to her son's bully? <sighs> 
I'm guessing that's what prompted public security to make their move. As the details of a Horace case came to light, a group of thugs calling themselves RK started looking for Shinya Kawai, all to find out that he was kidnapped five years ago, probably killed. I never did anything out of revenge. Even after finding out Kawai disappeared, public security still had to verify it. But if they found out you were involved, that'd be a win for them. They'd finally know Reiko Kusumoto's weakness. How long are you going to keep talking? As public security figured out, the bullying cases involving Toshiro Ihara and your son share a common link. That link being Sawa-sensei. She was Mitsuru-kun's classmate and Toshiro Ihara's teacher. Not only that, she was also linked to Ahara's murder victim, Mikoshima. She was his master teacher. So, not long after the murder, RK came to Ijincho and broke into her home. That must have been when they got Kawana's name out of her. I think Sawa-sensei suspected that Kawana was involved in Mikoshiba's murder. Then Soma steps in, with his professional interrogation skills, to beat and scare her into spilling everything. Kusumoto-san, you knew she was killed, right? Kawana should have told you over the phone. Wait, are you not one of his colleagues? He said he wouldn't cause me any trouble, and that he would never call me again. Kawana and I are competitors on a temporary ceasefire. We're not colleagues. How's your son doing now? He could wake up any minute now. Of course, that's been true for the last 13 years. I see. We transferred him to Toto University Hospital just this year, hoping they could spur his recovery. But it turns out they don't do anything much different from the previous hospital. All I can do is wait. Has anybody from public security contacted you? Have you been approached by any strangers? I have my suspicions. What are their names? <sighs> I imagine what they wanted was to exploit your weakness to control you. Because if all they wanted was to eliminate you, some kind of accident would be easily arranged. Yes. I suppose you're right. Do you have any idea what these people are after? And do you mind sharing? What they want is control of the pension fund, which is under the health ministry's jurisdiction. Pension fund? An independent agency within the ministry manages the national pension fund. It's taxpayer funded, and it's worth 160 trillion yen. What? And certain groups want to take bigger risks with that money in order to generate more profit. In other words, they want the health ministry to use taxpayer money to gamble. They believe that's the only way to rebuild Japan's faltering economy and secure the future of this country. I mean, would it work? Of course. If the gamble actually pays off. But if we lost the gamble, then we wouldn't be able to guarantee anything for the citizens of this country in their golden years. That's why the health ministry manages those funds conservatively. Even if it means the returns are lower. Okay. I'm starting to understand now. You do? Don't leave me in the dust, Yagami-san. To be able to gamble all this taxpayer money to save the economy, they need a change of management. And here's Kusumoto-san, head of the office. And she's beyond the control of even the ministers. Her position has the power to take action to override the way the pension fund is managed. But not only does Kusumoto-san have the power, she has the support of the people. If a new vice minister were to try it, they'd be stopped cold by the constraints. So that's why they wanted to find her weakness and exploit it? Exactly. And if the 160 trillion yen gamble were to fail, they could blame the whole thing on Kusumoto-san anyway. Okay. Wow. 160 trillion. 
I'm guessing they've already contacted you about it? That's an assumption. I have to ask you about Shinya Kawai. You killed him five years ago. With your own hands, didn't you? I understand what your feelings must be towards Kawai, but was that really the only answer? If you've spoken to Kitakata Sensei, then you must know about the video of how Mitsuru was treated. I do. Aside from Kawai, the other students pretended like nothing happened. They took no responsibility. They put on their sad faces and they came to visit Mitsuru at the hospital. But looking back on it now, I don't think they really wanted Mitsuru to wake up. In fact, that's what they were checking on. And what did I do? I bowed my head and thanked them. It was only later that Kitakata Sensei showed me the video. That's when I knew that those kids going unpunished was wrong. And your solution was to pull them into the quagmire? Make them accomplices in murdering Kawai? If you already know so much, what more do you need to ask? I get it now. Let me reiterate, we are not your enemy. Then please, let me go. Anything you want me to tell Kawana? I do. He needs to run. Far away. Public security has their sights on him. His capture is not a question of if, but when. He's in danger if he remains in the country. And once public security has him, they will extract everything he knows. You mean he'd be tortured? Yes. Somewhere well beyond the public eye. No one can withstand what they do. He'd tell them everything. And as for me... They would expose your vulnerability, making you their pawn. Most likely. They'd gamble away the taxpayers' money, and I'd never purge the corruption in the health ministry. I get that. But what does it matter? What? Because in my opinion, you need to turn yourself in. Kusumaro-san. <laughs> you want me to admit to manslaughter? You think I killed a real man? I say he was less than one. Shinya Kawai. He was little more than a subhuman brute. And you saw it. You saw what that brute did to my son. I hated Kitakata-sensei. He was an incompetent teacher. An idiot who turned a blind eye to Mitsuru being tortured. But that changed when he suddenly showed up eight years later. And then he showed me that video. He said, Every bully in that video, they deserve to be punished. That it was the only way to get closure. You took him up on it? But you of all people should have known better. True. You're right about that. I struggled with it quite a bit. It's an unconscionable act, no matter how deep your animosity runs. But Kitakata Sensei's words hung on. I couldn't get them out of my head. I saw for myself. I went to Kamrocha, where I'd heard Kuai was working, at a girl's bar. So you know, after Mitsuru jumped that day, Kuai came to me in tears to apologize. I hadn't seen him in all that time. If he'd frozen in place when he saw me, if he'd been the slightest bit apologetic, I might have been able to stay my hand. I take it he didn't do any of that. <laughs> right. He didn't even recognize my face. And that's hardly the worst part of it, actually. When he saw me, he took me for some bawdy cougar on the prowl for young men. If you've got the cash, I'll show you a good time, he said. All those tears he'd shed years earlier were a farce. But I knew that. Deep down, I'd already known that. That was it. 
That was the moment I lost all doubt about killing him. And as for those other kids who bullied Mitsuru, they should thank me they didn't share his fate. But that's why. That's why I don't feel like I have any sins to atone for. Every night, every night, I pray he will wake up. What more can you ask me to endure? Kawana said something similar. But you think you can repeat all that? This time say it to her. Isn't that... Sawa-san? You and Kawana can congratulate yourselves. You got vengeance on a monster. But what you're choosing not to see is that your actions had consequences for her. It's vicious. I've seen this before. Justice for one at the cost of another. Someone innocent always pays the price. I won't... I won't just sit here and watch as history tries to repeat itself. This phone isn't being traced by anyone. So, if you have a change of heart, just give me a call before you turn yourself in. That's all I had to say. We're back. Right here, okay, Yagami-san? Yeah. I'm gonna go talk to Kawana. Need to tell him I met with Reiko Kusamoto. He's gonna be pissed, you know? He's gonna try to rip you a new one. <laughs> That's true. So you might want to sit this one out. <laughs> you sure? Because I'll totally take you up on that. here. Haven't seen your mug in a while. It's only been two or three days. Where's Kawana? Hmm, how should I put this? <laughs> Would you freak out if he was right behind you? You know, this kind of shit is why you get on my nerves. Couldn't we have done this by phone? I just came from seeing Reiko Kusumoto. I told her to turn herself in for murdering Kawai five years ago. You what? What did she have to say about that? That she had no sins to atone for. Of course not. Look, what do you think you're doing? Her part in this is done. Don't drag her back into it. This isn't yours to finish. You would just let Sawa Sensei stay collateral damage. How do you think her folks feel? They probably think you killed their daughter. And they don't know why, or if justice will be served. Do they have to suffer like that? All without even knowing the truth? Would Sawa Sensei want that? You talk about justice, but she keeps getting left out. You aren't even trying when it comes to her. Say whatever you want, but if you cause Kusumoto san any more pain, I will never forgive you. That's exactly why I didn't tell you I was going to meet her. Listen, Yagami. She hides it well, but she's never gotten over the fact Mitsuru tried to jump to his death. And she's not sure how to feel about killing Kawai. Unlike me. If she was anything like you, I would have pushed her harder to confess. There's no evidence that she killed Kawai. He simply vanished from Kamurocho, and the police didn't even know about it. Besides, there's no case without a corpse. Point being, she'll never be charged. 
Even if she did turn herself in, the police wouldn't know what to do with her. Don't think for a second that you're getting a pass here. You've killed, what, seven people now? Do you even hesitate anymore? <laughs> you got proof? Running around making baseless accusations. You sure you were a real fucking lawyer? My colleagues and comrades are getting ready to appeal Ahara's case. Your actions are going to be put under a microscope. I wouldn't even call that bad news. I want the world to know their bullies are getting what they're due. And by then, I'll probably be going by a different name, maybe even a different look. You're just gonna keep doing this? Did Sawa-sensei sacrifice mean nothing to you? Is that the only thing keeping you around? Truth be told, I don't think exposing everything is even in Sawa's best interest. What? Sawakun herself felt guilty. I just sent you the proof. What is this? An audio file? After Ahara-san lost in court, she called me. I recorded our conversation. Toshiro-kun came running to the roof. His face was pretty swollen. And a few minutes later, a student named Mikoshiba came up looking for him. I'll never forget the fear I saw in Toshiro-kun's face. He told me about everything. The teasing, the beatings, the theft. How nobody was on his side. And yet, I had to deny all this in front of an entire courtroom. They said there was no hope. That I was the only witness with no proof whatsoever. Believe me, I never wanted to do that. Sawakun's testimony in court was false, and she was racked with guilt over it. And your first thought was to record it? When she was at her most vulnerable? Yes. And then I played it for Ihara-san. He had the right to know the real reason his son killed himself. All you did was light the fires of vengeance in Ahara's heart because you didn't want to be alone. You know, I've heard that bullying is almost instinctive. That's why people who do it never stop. I mean, think about it. Would you stop cleaning a toilet just because it'll get filthy again? Somebody's always got to get his hands dirty. And that somebody's gonna be you? If it means I can prevent another Mitsuru Kusumoto, yes, I will keep killing. These bastards who prey on the defenseless must be punished for all to see. I wish the law would do its job. Because deep down, I don't want to do any of this. I understand what you're saying, but you're taking it too far. Just stop, Kawana. If you really want to stop me, you're gonna have to kill me, and call it justice. <sighs> I thought you guys were gonna start another fight. It was a bitch cleaning up the mess last time. Next time I go up against him, it won't be just a few scratches. Well, when that time comes, take it anywhere but here. Hello? It's Shirosaki. Are you in Yokohama again, Yagami-san? Yeah. Is this about Ahara's trial? Yes. Regarding the appeal. The prosecution says they want to consult with us. Off the record. Off the record? What do you mean? They want to discuss with the judge beforehand whether or not Ahara's murder footage is admissible evidence. The video has gone viral, of course, and nobody's really sure how to handle it. 
Is the prosecution really going to hold the line on it being a deep fake? That's quite possible. Which is why we're meeting today in the courthouse conference room. I'm sorry for the short notice, but could you join us? Of course. I'll be there. Thank you very much. No need to rush. There's still plenty of time. Just be sure you're there, please. So what you're saying is, Yui Mamiya was not a victim of sexual battery, but rather she conspired with Akihiro Ehara to fake a murder alibi. We've already closed the book on that ordeal, yet now the defense wants to write a sequel? To establish the defendant's motive in the harassment, we need to bring the Mikoshiba murder to light. The groping itself was staged. It was all part of their script, right down to the guilty verdict. It sounds like the defendant has some strong hostility for the court. Ihara got the court to accept his murder alibi by twisting the legal process to his own ends. It was easy to miss, because at the time, Mikoshiba's body hadn't been found yet. But we have to admit that we all got duped. We? You're not even a lawyer. You're a detective. Yagami-sensei still has a license to practice. Forget what I said if it offended you, Prosecutor. My superiors always told me that in his youth, your Genda-sensei was a difficult man. He'd insist his clients were innocent, persisting even in the face of conviction. He was hostile to the prosecution, and was known to fraternize with Kamurocho Yakuza. But it was his sheer disrespect that made my boss hate him. Damn. You sure know an awful lot about Genda-sensei. Because I honestly can't say I like him. He treated me like a child when I was starting out. I'll tell you this. There's no higher praise for the defense than being called difficult by the prosecution. Hmm. Uh, now if we can get back on track, can we confirm the defendant himself has agreed to the appeal? Yes. But if Ehara really committed the murder, why would he agree to his alibi being scrutinized? Ahara's objective isn't to get away with murder. Then what is he after? Making a mockery of the legal system. Hmm. <laughs> then it'd be best not to pay him any attention. And you'd be right. If your priority is saving face in front of the court rather than preserving fairness in the law. You've got a real attitude. Sorry I'm a bit late. So, with this appeal, the defense wants to assert the defendant's innocence by establishing his guilt in a murder. Wait, before we go on, who is this? He's from the Metropolitan Police. Considering Ehara was on the force, he has a vested interest here. He's not here to participate, don't worry. The police can't afford to be embarrassed any further. We need to send the right message to the public. Can we have your name, please? The name is Bondo. And your title? Think of me as a kind of police coordinator. <laughs> but don't let me interrupt the proceedings. Forget I'm even here. Please, continue. So much for this meeting being off the record. Allow me to restate the prosecution's opinion to the judge. We cannot allow the murder footage to be used as new evidence in Akihiro Ehara's appeal. It's nothing but an online hoax of unknown origin. We can't just casually introduce that into court. Indeed. Furthermore, if Ehara bears such hostility towards the court, the footage might end up being a trap. Trap? Yes. 
What if the next viral video proves the original footage was doctored? What if the proceedings have already begun by then? Do we drop the appeal and call it a day? We cannot allow a man like Ehara to swing the court around by its nose at his whims. With that in mind, I believe Ehara's conviction should be upheld and enforced. Would the defense care to comment? Did you think any of this through before filing this appeal? Yes. We aim to prove the defendant's innocence no matter what your objections may be. And what about you? Ehara's guilty verdict was wrong. We don't think there was enough evidence at the first trial to result in that verdict. There was fiber from the victim's underwear found on Ehara's hand. That was a trick. It was set up with cooperation from the victim. There is no evidence it was a trick. Are you saying Yui Mamiya and Ehara met beforehand? Is there proof of that? Was there perhaps any security footage we didn't see? No, the station erases the footage from their cameras after a few days if there's no need to keep it. Right. But if there's even a chance Ahara and Mamiya were a team, the underwear fiber proves nothing. Hmm. What were the other deciding factors? Security footage? The smartphone videos we kept seeing on TV? Those don't prove the crime either, because there was a huge time gap in them. What? We've done enough legwork to know. Did you walk around the site with your own two feet, Prosecutor? Uh, well, no. But I have been to Shinjuku Station plenty of times. Then you must know they have a mountain of security cameras covering every angle. But if you went there to look carefully, you'd find there are some blind spots. That's a horror running, while Mamiya chases after her. It seems as though the whole chase is recorded, but this area in dotted lines is a blind spot no camera saw. That's the momentary gap in time where Ahara and his double switched places. The victim was running right behind Ahara. She would have noticed if they swapped places right in front of her eyes. Oh, but she knew about the swap all along. They were all in on it from the start. Can you prove that? We don't have to prove the defendant is innocent, Takarasan. What? All we have to prove is that the evidence provided by the prosecution at the trial was insufficient to determine guilt. Because that's the role of a defense counsel. Indeed it is. If the prosecution can't debunk any and all possibility that the train groping was a put-up job, then it's innocent until proven guilty. Then the defense should have brought it up the first time. Although I doubt Shirosaki-sensei actually believed in the defendant's innocence herself. The guilty verdict at the trial was orchestrated by the defendant. It was our error not to have seen it at the time, but it would be another not to correct ourselves now. Stop being so dramatic! He's just a subway bird! That is a statement I cannot abide. The law can't give the impression that a false charge is permissible, even for a subway bird. Right. I take that back. I misspoke. Hmm. <laughs> I do believe this case is worth a trial in the appeal court. If the court was misled by a hostile defendant, then only the court can correct it. Thank you very much. However, I too have seen Ihara-san's murder footage. I believe it would be difficult to introduce it as evidence in this trial. Therefore, I cannot allow it to be brought into the courtroom at this time. Sorry, son. Think you've got this covered? Huh? I'll poke my head in at the office later. Very well. We'll be expecting you. Bando-san, was it? From public security? I don't recall saying my department. <laughs> but yeah, that's right. Do you know Reiko Kusamoto? 
the Vice Minister at the Ministry of Health? Of course. Any particular reason she's under constant surveillance? <sighs> A rather bold question, isn't it? It's just you and me here. I see you know how to cut to the chase, Yagami Sensei. Ahara's trial can't be that important to you. So I have to figure I'm the reason you showed up. You want to know where Kawana is, don't you? Were you finally forced to get off your ass because nobody else can get eyes on him? Kawana, otherwise known as Yu Kitikata, is wanted on suspicion of murder. If you know where he is, please do tell. Wanted for murder? Huh. Because you know, I thought it was RK acting on your orders that killed Sawa Sensei. You think you can hide that fact forever? Even the cops in the field have their suspicions. Do they? <laughs> well, the cubicle workers always resent the corner offices. Officers in the field complain about their superiors. I did the same thing back in my day. Then why did you use thugs as your pawns instead of officers? Is that how Sawa Sensei got roped into this? I'm afraid I'm not following. You knew it was going to be a dirty job from the beginning. That's why you couldn't use anybody on the force. Or maybe you just weren't able to find an underling you could fully trust. <laughs> That's a good one. Public security's only tricks are surveillance and call tracing. You leave the dirty work to the thugs. That may be true, but it's enough to crush the likes of you. I'm gonna ask just in case. Where is Soma now? Hand over Kawana to me and there will be no more victims. What? Do you have a reason to protect him? I already know he's going around executing bullies. He's a disturbance to public order. But he wasn't the one who killed Sawa-sensei. I didn't come here to argue. I came to issue an ultimatum. Yagami-san, was everything okay back there? That man, Bondo, I knew something was off about him. Is he one of the men behind RK? Yeah, there's no doubt about it. He was trying to find out where Kawana was. I see. That reminds me, Hoshino-kun seems to have heard some rumors about RK. Hoshino-kun, did you pick up what the word is on RK? Yeah. One of the bosses, Akutsu, came back to Kamurocho yesterday. He's back? He's number two in the group, isn't he? Yeah, so he would probably know about Soma. Know where he is? Well, I'm not sure if you're aware, Yagami-san, but RK owns some of the cabaret clubs in Kamurocho. And Akutsu manages them. If a girl makes a lot of sales, or if she becomes a rising star in the club, Akutsu apparently gives that girl a bonus, personally. How do you know this stuff, Hoshino-kun? <laughs> Our clients come from all walks of life in Kamurocho, cabaret girls included. So to sum it all up, a popular girl has a chance to meet Akutsu? Yeah, but this week nobody was getting that chance, until yesterday. 
Which is how I figured out Akatsu is back in Kamarocho. He must have been in Yokohama. Oh, well, that makes sense. But where exactly in Kamarocho is he? That's the part I don't know. RK bosses never sleep in the same place twice. Gotta keep the cops off their trail. But despite the risk, Akatsu still reaches out to popular girls. <laughs> hey, I'm not even mad. In fact, I'm up for the challenge. Awesome, Sarisan. If you can rock the cabaret gig again, you can hook Akatsu. It'd be an undercover mission to infiltrate RK. Super risky. But damn if I don't want to see Sarisan transform one more time! I can't help it! What the hell's gotten into you? Are there any bars we know for sure that RK owns? There is. You remember Queen Rouge, the place Saori-san snuck into a long time ago? RK recently took over the management there. Queen Rouge? What about the owner? Still the same guy? Yep, he's still there. One of the original employees. Only thing is, it used to be a classy spot, but they've cut a lot of corners. The vibe has probably changed a lot. Really? Well, maybe that means I can afford to go. Hey, totally! I want to go too! This is no time to be idiots. Okay, well, sorry son, you'll need the whole makeover again. I can take point on that. No need, I'll be fine. Huh? Just the other day, Mari-san and I figured out what kind of makeup goes over well with RK. I'll just go with that. With Mari? Well, counterpoint, I think a man might know better what men like. With all due respect, don't judge what you haven't seen. Oh, uh, really? Okay, I'll leave it to you, sorry son. Should have just kept my mouth shut. Believe me, I'm not one to boast, but I'm confident my efforts are in the best interest of the mission. <laughs> That's the spirit. With Saurikun here, Genda Law will have its doors open for another 20 years. True. And we've got Yagami-san's wisdom, too. All right. Should we get on with the mission? Let's do this. That is nice. <laughs> you can thank Mari-san. It's perfect. I'm really impressed. Fine. Well then, shall we head over to Queen Rouge? Oh, while you were doing your makeup, I talked to the owner about you coming in. The like Koshino-kun said, there's apparently a system in place where a girl with great sales potential gets the attention of Akutsu. I understand. Basically, I just have to aim to be number one at the bar, right? How confident are you? I can't make any guarantees, but I'll give it my all. Then I'm with you all the way, a lady. Ready, sorry, son? this place sometimes, but it's been a while since I've been inside. The owner remembered you from last time. Said he wished you were there every night instead of just one. The undercover cabaret girl of his dreams returns. Oh, take this before you go. It's a wireless earpiece. If you end up going somewhere with Akatsu, we can use it to communicate. 
I'll be there in a flash if things go even remotely south. Got it. I know you have my back, Yagami-san. <laughs> you bet. Good luck then. Ah! Oh! Saori-san! <sighs> it's you! Yeah. Looking at you takes me back to better days. You are a cut above. A sight for sore eyes. Nice to see you again. Have you been well? I'm fine. I'm fine! <sighs> well, that's a lie. Last time you were here, we were a good place. But times have only gotten tougher. Now, we're just a fast and cheap dive bar. With mediocre service. Yes, I heard a bit about that. Keep this on the down low, but, uh... The former owner lost a bet in Mahjong, so we sold the bar. We're under RK's management now. And ever since they took over, we're just like every other CD place. We don't even make a profit unless we're shuffling people in and out, which of course impacts the girls' performance. But I hear the girls with promise catch the eye of the RK members. Haha! <laughs> so you already know about that. Yes, RK treats people well who treat their bottom line well. If they notice a special girl, they'll give her a bonus to show their generosity. Or maybe Akutsutsan just wants to drink with cute girls. Where do girls usually meet up with Akutsutsan? No particular location. Just depends on his mood, I guess. Ha-ha! <laughs> but you have your eye on that bonus, I see. Well, if anyone could get it, it's you, Saori-san. I'm rooting for you. Can you hear me, Saori-san? Yes. So you got in okay. Just so you know, I think I'm gonna call for support. Support? Yeah, so in case you meet Akatsu, we'll be ready to pounce on him. But you'll be on your own until then. So, are you the new girl the manager brought in? You're... <laughs> kinda older than I thought you'd be. I'm sorry. Nice to meet you. Hmm. Huh. What club were you at before this? Oh, I'm usually an office worker. But I worked here once about two years ago. What, so you just come back whenever you feel like it? Like some part-time gig? Really? You treat this job like it's a cakewalk and expect us not to be offended? Oh, uh, point taken. So, I guess tonight I should sit back and watch the professionals show me how it's done? What? Are you dissing us? What? You can haze new girls, but if they give it back, you lose your cool? Excuse me? Now, now. You can't scowl like that when customers are here to have a good time. Oh, you little... <laughs> wow. I thought you were just another snob, but you've got barbed wire where it counts. Megu! You're gonna let a new chick talk to us this way? Old or new doesn't matter. If you've got the goods, I have no complaints. I'm going to do my best, and I'll try not to weigh you two down. Sorry, son. Megu-san, Kuriko-san, we have customers! Let's get to work! Well, time for the new girl to show us what people see in her. <laughs> yes, I'm looking forward to it. Hello! I'm Megu! <laughs> Welcome! I'm Kuniko. I'm sorry. Nice to meet you. Oh, sorry, chan uh, Come, come, sit here. Wow, you're beautiful. Oh, the best of the bunch. Man, I am loving this place. Uh, um, so, how are you?
But, you know, I could make any prosecutor shake in his boots just by yelling, OBJECTION! <laughs> That's awesome, you... killer lawyer, you. Jeez, why is Genda Sensei getting all the attention? For your information, I passed the national bar exam with top marks. Uh-huh. Oh, what's a bar exam? Oh, you've got to be kidding. You ladies have really never heard of the bar exam? It's the toughest certification test in Japan! <laughs> I've heard of it. Oh, so it's a certificate? Well, I passed kanji level 3 when I was in middle school. That's not even comparable. Kanji aptitude is a very fine certification. Huh? You passed your stupid bar exam how many years ago now? And you're still bragging about your scores? Seriously? What? Um, I, uh... Uh, sorry, John. You can't talk that way to a customer. No, she's right. It's a dumb thing to brag about, isn't it? But the bar is really hard. Not everyone passes it. There's so much studying to do, day and night. Oh my god, he's crying. Well, no matter how long ago it was, it's, it's still an amazing accomplishment. Your glories of the past are worth bragging about. I mean, it's the National Bar Exam. Glories of the past? Did you have to put it like that? Is this bar exam thing really that big of a deal? Yeah, you know what? My cousin said he tried three times and still failed. And he graduated from Toto University. A Toto University grad couldn't pass it? Then it is a pretty amazing accomplishment. <laughs> That's true. It really is hard. <laughs> of course, I myself passed it easy peasy back in the day. It's incredible, isn't it? That's why lawyers deserve our respect. Don't you agree? I do, I do. And lawyers make a lot of money, right? Girls must be all over you wherever you go. Ah, uh, well, no, not really. Oh, how cute, he's blushing. This is great, Candace, I'd say. Let's get some more drinks. <laughs> you got it. More drinks it is. How about you, girls? Yes, please. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Listen up, girls. This is a heck of a lot of fun. <laughs> I'm having a great time. I tell you, I love cabaret clubs so much. <laughs> Me too, Genda Sensei. Especially this one. The customer service is on point. I wish I could come here every night and stay till morning. Oh, you two know just how to flatter us. So true. Hey, in case you come back, would you like to reserve a bottle in your name? You guys are lawyers, so I'm sure you can afford it. <laughs> well, we're not a big firm. But you know what? <laughs> Let's do it. Nice one, boss! You're the best! Uh-oh. What's wrong, Sari-san? You're looking kind of gloomy there. <laughs> Come on, how about a smile? Yeah, sari -kun. I was thinking, if you could be just a bit friendlier, you'd be the belle of the ball! <laughs> um... You guys already know, Saori-san? You act like you're good friends. Hmm, they do seem pretty close, right? Huh? I don't know. But would it be so wrong if we did know each other? Of course not, but this does happen to be our first meeting. <laughs> Silly sensei. Is it the first time? Is it really, though? 
You're both teasing me so much. <laughs> Poor Megu-san and Kuniko-san are giving me dirty looks. Oh, I mean, that's because... Something does seem fishy. Hey, Hoshino-sensei. Looks like you've had a lot to drink tonight. Have you forgotten all about work? Uh, 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 uh. Hmm? Is your head lost in the clouds? What's going on behind this cute little face? Um, impure thoughts, maybe? Hoshino-kun, this, this is inappropriate. Stop this, now, both of you. Oh, uh, excuse me? Uh, can we get that girl at this table, too? Yes, sir. You mean sour sour. Oh, Correct? oh, me too. Wait a minute, what about us? Oh, my. <laughs> please, please, everyone. She's only one person. I guess the new girl's a hit. Oh, she sure showed us up. This is crazy. I just got lucky tonight. Yeah, right. I don't think I could have done better than you in any department. You're a natural at conversation, and so sexy, too. I learned a lot, actually. And whoo, I drank a lot more than usual. Thanks for the hard work, you three. I bet you barely got any breaks. It was one customer after another. What a night. We haven't had this good a take in a while. No, I couldn't have done it without Megu-san and Kuniko-san at my side. Come on, it was pretty obvious who the MVP was this evening. Boss, seeing as you're here, does that mean Saori-san's getting a bonus? That she is. Who would have thought this could happen on her first day? All I can say is, wow. Akutsu-san wants to meet you. Show his appreciation by giving you the bonus himself. There's already a taxi waiting outside. Really? That is so awesome. No kidding! So the bonus thing is real, huh? I hope I get one someday. So, where exactly is Akutsu-san waiting for me? Apparently it's a surprise! He doesn't just let that information out. But I'm sure it's somewhere in Kamurocho. And don't worry, I'm told there'll be another cab to take you home. I see. Well then, I'm looking forward to it. Don't worry, Sarisan, I'm standing by. If you need me, I'll be there in a flash. Driver, could you tell me where we're headed? Oh, <laughs> we're almost there, miss. We're not leaving Kamrocho, are we? No, no. No need to worry. I think he's driving to the Thug Hangout, the underground club. That's where I met Soma for the first time. I thought it had been shut down, but maybe they opened it back up. We'll be arriving soon. Sorry, san I presume? We've been expecting you. You are very beautiful. Akutsu-san will be happy. Thank you for inviting me. RK takes care of people who keep the cash flowing. The fact you're here means you have a talent for it. You're one of us now, sorry san If you would follow me... Certainly. Here she is, Akutsu-san. Tonight's heroine, Saori-san from Queen Rouge. Ah, <laughs> and I see why. You're hotter than your reputation. Come here. 
Let me give you some motivation to keep at it. I've heard so much about you, Akutsu-san. It's a pleasure to meet someone so famous. Have a seat. I'm not gonna ask you to pour after a hard night's work. This sake is not cheap. That's cool though, right? <laughs> Gotta show my appreciation, don't I? Oh, there's no need for that. Well, on to the moment of truth. Your bonus. One million yen. Quite a stack of cash for an office worker. Yeah. It's a big pile of money for anyone. Oh, even for lawyers? Shirosaki Sensei? I'm not sure I follow. This lady lawyer came poking around before. Except she was trying to find out about Kawhi at the time. You see, when it comes to Kamurocho, we have eyes everywhere. Anybody suspicious gets reported to us fast. Most of the eyes working for me or Soma are spies in the police force. And now, we've got a law lady in the bag. <laughs> so, what do you want with me? Who sent you here, huh? Well, this took a turn for the worse, didn't it? You're only just noticing that. Kinda slow for a lawyer, aren't you? Oh, I didn't mean for me. It just got worse. For you. <laughs> what the? Man, you were harder to find than I thought, Akatsu. Wow, so it was you pulling sorry John strings. Hell of a sight. Some piece of shit ex Tojo man thinks he's king of the hill now? Don't make me laugh. You're the worthless pile of shit, Higashi. Props for having the spine to show up here without backup. And after you barely escaped with your life, Yagami. Hold that thought. Because this isn't the whole party. Huh? The only guy I really want to fuck up is Soma. But I guess. I'll have to settle for you, losers, tonight. Kaito... Couldn't just stay dead, huh? Nice work, Sari-san. We'll take it from here, but... Did you ring the gong for us? What? Nothing kicks off a fight better than a beauty ringing a gong. Yeah. Give us something to get the mood going. Okay. Well then. Gentlemen! Do your worst! Get ready! Let's go! Hell yeah! Here we go!
Can't run anymore, Akatsu. Can we talk now? Where's Soma? Where's he hiding? I don't know. He moves around more than I do. Really? Are you really just another one of his pawns? Just gonna cover for him and obey his every word? Soma can tell when someone's lying. He's always been able to. I won't be able to get away with bullshitting him. Friend or foe, if he finds a traitor, he stomps the rat dead. He can sniff out the faintest scent of betrayal. That's why I've always told him the truth. No point trying to BS him. In this business, nothing beats the ability to detect liars. You serious right now? You're buying into some bullshit rumors, dumbass. <sighs> You just don't fucking get it, man. He can practically see the future. He was the first to bail from the Tojo clan. And usually, you need a shit ton of money to leave a clan if you don't want to be killed. That's what it's like to be a Yakuza. Huh. Remember who you're talking to, asshole. But Soma, he somehow knew there was no future for the Tojo, so he jumped ship. With no money, and not even a word to the bosses. Just up and left. There's no way he could get away with that. That's what I thought. I said the same thing to him when he was leaving. I warned him, they'll fucking erase you. The bastard just laughed. He said the clan was finished. No way could they kill him. Then he had the boss to give me advice. Said I should get out too and not worry about it. What did he mean by that? By that point, the Tojo clan didn't have the resources to properly deal with the Vectors. Soma understood that. And sure enough, he left without a word, and nobody ever tried to fuck with him. It's true. Soma was the first guy to slip out. 
No doubt the dude knew what was up. While the Tojo clan was limping to its grave, Somo went underground and built the arcade network all by himself. And that's how you became his errand boy. What do you expect? I can't control Soma. I'm just the public face of RK. He holds the reins. I've been cool with that ever since I joined. <laughs> At least you're enough of a man to admit what you are. Akatsu, Soma's being used by public security. Did you know that? Public security? Why was Soma looking for Shinya Kawai and Kamurocho? I don't know. All I heard was somebody hired him to do that. Why is he after Kawana? I... Uh... How are Soma and public security linked? Give me something. Doesn't it at least ring a bell? I don't know, man. The fuck you mean ring a bell? I don't know shit! Wait. Nah. <sighs> but maybe... What is it? Tuck, is it possible that Soma himself is public security? Soma working in public security? What do you mean? Well, public security trains people to become spies, so they can infiltrate and collect intel. Right wing, left wing, anti-establishment citizens groups, you get the picture. They usually try to find a weak spot in the org, someone they can turn to their side. So yeah, that's one way to do it. But sometimes a cop who's already in public security goes undercover to infiltrate something like a Yakuza organization. What you get is a Yakuza who knows everything about the police and would be super good at sniffing out liars. You're saying Soma is actually an undercover agent? You heard what this fool said. Soma figured out the Tojo clan didn't have a future, so he ditched them. You think some street punks got that kind of foresight? He couldn't. Unless he had intel from the law. That'd be a different beast. He'd have to know the Tojo clan and Kamurocho like the back of his hand. Including knowing that the Tojo clan would dissolve soon. Yep. And then after he gets out, what does he do next? He makes a place for all the Yakuza coming out of the Tojo clan to find each other. Right? Where public security can easily monitor them. That's why RK is still coming to ex-Tojo clan Yakuza like me. In other words, RK was founded by public security to manage all the displaced Yakuza? Sure as hell sounds like their M.O. No matter how many crime rings they bring down, another always pops up in its place. This way, public security doesn't have to start from scratch. They can just keep tabs on all the free agents. But it's mind-blowing that they'd install their own leader. Sure as hell sounds like collusion to me. Soma? An undercover public security agent? Shit. We gotta move. Cut the fucking chit chat. Why? He's gotta be fucking listening in on us right now. If he's public security and heard all that. Get your shit together, Akatsu. What does it matter? Don't you get it? There's no way he'd want anyone else to fucking know! <laughs> <laughs> Found us. 